in this lecture we are going to say something again about liquid liquid extraction in fact i put a title tutorial here instead of lecture and why i call it as tutorial because we are not going to to learn any new theory from this lecture but what we are going to do is like uh, we're just going to remember whatever we know about liquid liquid extraction and then i'm going to show you some some diagram that may help you that may help you to to understand what type of system that we are dealing with when we when we are going to talk about liquid liquid extraction liquid liquid extraction is a very very tough topic because you have three components in the system and as i said in the i don't know lecture three or four whenever we have two components it's easy to to deal with it's easy to pick the trend it's easy to tell like um like what's the relationship between of between two of these components so i will i will quickly go back to what's explain what's happening when we are going to do some liquid liquid extraction i hope you all remember this diagram so this is your reactor and then it contains a feed solution the feed solution is nothing but that carries your solute solute plus carrier liquid so these two are nothing but feed solution and then you are, you add the feed solution and then you add your solvent this is nothing but your extracting solvent and then you give some very good agitation so what and just assume this is a time t equal to zero so once you provide agitation and once the system reached equilibrium so uh, sorry once you start to give your agitation you are so you will make something like a mixture with a lot of tiny tiny bubbles made up of your feed solution and then your solute let me change the color your solute will will move from this one one bubble to your to your solvent so this will happen until the system reaches to an equilibrium at equilibrium once once you think the system reached equilibrium so you stop the mixing and then you allow the system to to settle it will separate again i showed this diagram in the lecture 4 i think and then you will have a lot of solvent in the top very little solvent in the bottom sorry not solvent you are uh, you are uh, <laughs> your solute solute in the extracting solvent and then you have very little solute in the in your feed solution so that's how your liquid liquid extraction works and in this experiment what we assume is like your solvent and your carrier liquid they are completely immiscible yeah so always remember this word miscibility immiscible or partially miscible or partially immiscible so these words will help you to know what type of system that we are dealing with whenever we are going to talk about liquid liquid extraction it's not easy but um, i'm going to show you some diagram that's the purpose of this tutorial and few things you have to remember before that So whenever I say feed solution, feed solution contains two components. One is your sol sorry, A is your carrier liquid, C is your solute, and then solvent. Solvent. This is something we are going to add to do the extraction process from another liquid. So and we use this notation B. So I use this word cab. So try to remember and don't confuse with these notations, yeah, because if you don't rem if you don't follow some certain rule or a pattern it, you will get confused whenever i'm going to give you some problem it's better stick to this notation c for solute a for carrier liquid and b for solvent and then another thing you have to remember whenever we are going to talk about liquid liquid extraction you have to think about miscibility you need to like if you have a ternary diagram like this you have your you should we will get some some diagrams and we will get some some lines going inside the 
this triangle so just follow this side and you, we have to know the meaning of uh, what is this blob inside the triangle yeah so that's what i'm going to cover in this tutorial and this is something you have to remember i said whenever we talk about ternary systems obviously we have three components solute carrier liquid solvent and in the triangle always try to start from the top c a b so cab so c refers to solute a refers to your carrier liquid b refers to your solvent so never loop never confuse with these notations i don't know if you are following any book then they might use other type of notations yeah but for the for this lecture or for in our module what i'm going to stick is uh, i'm going to stick to this this common notation c for solute a for carrier liquid b for solvent so whenever we are going to draw some ternary diagram if i if you where if i mention that notation c it means i'm talking about solute and then let's go to this some this these are topics you should remember yeah because textbook won't give all this information this one will you will understand once you try to solve maybe say 10 to 20 different problems then you will understand what this diagram means so I, I already did that so I'm trying to to to, to share this so whatever I, I understood by solving those so many problems yeah. so what we are going to see I know this in this module at least at this moment we are dealing with a with the ternary system but you but to understand this concept the concept of liquid liquid extraction you should be very good in in understanding the concept of immiscibility yeah so so to understand the concept let us assume we have only two components for the moment just assume we are dealing with uh, with a system that has two components say a and b so what is this a and b just ignore whether this is a carrier liquid or solvent just think they are two so two liquids one is a and one is b so out of these two you can get four different combinations yeah so one is completely miscible just follow the blue blue how do you write i'm using this blue ink at the moment so just follow whatever i'm writing on the screen so first one is completely miscible which is a plus b so which means uh, once you, you add a you add b and then everything become completely miscible so you'll end up with one liquid so if you have this type of situation where a and b is completely miscible separation is is impossible yeah Okay, suppression is impossible through other technique, but it's they, they won't separate themselves. So they will be together and then we have to think about other techniques to in order to separate them. But this one is it's not possible to separate. So this is a very simple logic. Imagine you have a water and then you have oil. They are completely immiscible, which means we can easily separate them. So that's the concept. But for this case, case one, which is a plus b is completely miscible which means separation is impossible yeah so this is no way i'm going to put a sad smiley and and then just imagine a and b they are completely immiscible so you cannot uh, change molecules from a to b or b to a so they will stand alone once you put them together yeah so just imagine you add a you add b you give some agitation obviously they're going to to disperse in the form of bubbles say like uh, once you give agitation it might get into bubbles but once you stop your agitation nothing happens it comes back to the original state something will be uh, top will be a bottom will be b so these are completely immiscible so which means naturally we can separate them so which means your separation is extremely good that separation is easy easy or I don't know how to say excellent or good anything that you want to call so this is an ideal system which is easy to 
to separate from each other because they are completely immiscible. So this is your case 2 and case 3 is partially miscible. These are very basics but we need to understand these things to, to know about um, in order to get some extra bit of uh, knowledge on uh, ternary systems because in ternary systems you are going to draw some diagram and you are going to get some some curve or some 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 phase separation inside the the triangle so if you want to understand what's really happening then you have to know this for this, this simple rules yeah? so at the moment we are just dealing with uh, only a system that contains two components a plus b but this is more than more than enough uh, to to understand the ternary diagrams and then now again ternary diagrams and also the the, the the actual concept behind the liquid liquid extraction so one thing now you understand is like if two components are completely miscible then all it's impossible to separate that that one thing you learn now and then if two components are completely immiscible then they are very easy to separate yeah and then there is another one you can call them as a partially miscible so what does that mean by partially miscible a plus b and what do i mean by another case which is partially immiscible so they they sound almost similar yeah so but the key difference between partially miscible and partially immiscible so partially miscible means like uh, a and b they are most of the time they are they are miscible and at some conditions they are immiscible yeah so imagine if you have a plot let's put a and let's put b this is your common point so this is some composition from here to here from here to here say like a 0 to 0.5 in the middle 0 and here to 0.5 if it's partially miscible which means they are miscible most of the time and only at some time they are immiscible something like here so what do i mean by by this diagram so only at this small composition they may be Im immiscible at the remaining compositions they are completely miscible yeah that can happen with the liquid at some composition they can become immiscible at some compositions they become miscible so we and and in this type of situation so we call them something as partially miscible like if a and b are most of the time they are miscible and then only at some time they are immiscible yeah so that's the main idea behind partially miscible or if you want you can tell like a and b are most of the time they are friends and only at some time they fight something like that yeah so keep that in the mind and then because uh, you, you need to know these concepts uh, before we are going to draw the something uh, on the ternary diagram on the ternary plot if you want we can call that way and another one is uh, partially immiscible so what do i mean by this uh, so a and b they are most of the time they are immiscible but at some comp some time or at some composition they become miscible so let's put some line again let's put the scale 0 to 0.5 0 to 0.5 this is a this is b so most of the time they are miscible see this type of blob so what do i mean by this this diagram instead of blob we can just mention say 0 0.5 0.5 this is b this is a this is your middle point so from most of this time they are immiscible from here to here and during this when exit some some part some fraction they become miscible so you don't have to stick to this this diagram but all you need to know is like uh, partially miscible is something a and b are most of the time miscible at some compositions they become immiscible and then partially immiscible is something like most of the time they are not um, 
miscible and at some time they will become miscible and always remember separation is inversely proportional to miscibility so partially miscible is not bad yeah so you can just put some st straight face for partially miscible this is okay can, so the sep this is good to separate this we can separate these components only at some conditions so that's the meaning of uh, miscibility and that's how you relate something to the separation factor so i prefer if you need to separate something 100% then complete miss immiscible this is a good thing a plus b if two of your liquids are completely immiscible obviously it's easy to to separate them so that's the relationship between miscibility and uh, your separation factor it's not even a separation factor so at the moment of, uh, what we are talking is like a, a tiny bit of theory something that relates how good we can separate two liquids and then and then miscibility are and are based on how do you call like um, they are they are miscible or completely miscible or they are partially miscible or partially immiscible so now you get some idea like uh, which one of these combinations is good is good to separate And then this one I already showed in the previous lectures. I just put the title flow sheeting. So just assume this is your extracting extra, look, extraction unit. So you give some feed. That feed contains two components, which is your solute. We use this notation A. And then liquid, we use the notation A for liquid, C for your solute. And then you also give some solvent. We use the notation B. Let's assume this is completely mixed system and then uh, uh, you, you give the agitation and then you stop the agitation and then you will see some clear separation, phase separation. We, will, we see this clear phase separation and that's because just now we talked about miscibility. So you can see this phase separation only if you are going to deal with uh, this this type of system like uh, two completely immiscible partially miscible or partially immiscible yeah. so if not you, we will not see any phase separation here so let's go back to this diagram and then we are going to use some notations so the feed plus carrier liquid at the end of at equilibrium it will it, it will how do you call at equilibrium most of your solute will be transferred to to the extract so let me draw the diagram again so at after equilibrium or at equilibrium the top portion where you have loads of your solute molecules we call this as extract and then the bottom feed liquid now will we call it as a raffinate try to find, if you don't remember try to check the previous lectures lectures four and five i think and then we are going to use some notations now So try to follow the, I don't know which color is this, just to follow the red highlighter, whatever I'm going to draw. So, so what happens is like, uh, you, you, let me go back. So we take a solution, we have a feed solution, and then you add some solvent. We give some agitation and then just assume your solute molecules transferred from your feed solution to your solvent side so after equilibrium now and also just assume that for the moment there is some is some level of miscibility between your carrier liquid which is here and your your solvent 
So a tiny bit of molecules from the your solvent molecules move from solvent to carrier liquid and from carrier liquid to solvent. So there is a, they are how do you call like uh, they are partially immiscible. You know? They are partially immiscible. So which means some molecules are or so something moves from carrier liquid to solvent and some solvent moves from solvent side to carrier liquid. So that's the meaning of that. So which means at the end of your experiment, your extract side, we will have three components. We shall three components A, B and C. Let me go back to highlight. So at the end of the experiment, you have three components. One is your A and then your B and then your C. So which means your extract side of your liquid contains a bit of your carrier your carrier liquid, a lot of solvent obviously and then a lot of your solute molecules. And then your raffinate side it should again contains obviously A is your carrier liquid, a large number of A and then your concentration of B might have dropped because sorry concentration of C might have dropped because you already had changed something to the extract side and then a tiny fraction of your component B which is nothing but your solvent. So which means you have these three components on both sides and then the weight fraction of each each of these components you are going to use some notations the weight fractions of A, B, C in the raffinate, we are going to use a notation X and then the weight fraction of uh, component A, B and C in the extract, we are going to use the notation Y. So what do I mean by that? So let's draw here. So at after equilibrium, you will have component A, B, C here and then you will have component A, B, C here just to follow the pink color which I am typing now, writing now sorry. And then the weight fraction, so so weight fraction is something like 10 say 10 percent A, 10 percent B and then 80 percent C something like that. So and we we use a notation to to <coughs> instead of giving number we will follow some notations say. so weight fraction of a so let's call it like y a weight fraction of b y b weight fraction of c y c so this is for your extract part and for your raffinate part we are going to use the word x suffix a f su x suffix b x suffix c so these are these are very simple but Try to remember it. If not, you will not understand anything when you are going to solve some problems. And then we will have at the end of your experiment, you will have something called as extract and something called as raffinate. Only, only if the components are partially immiscible or, or partially miscible or completely immiscible. Only if, to be precise, only if any of the two components any of the two components. So let me write it clear here. Only if any of the two components Are partially miscible or partially immiscible or completely immiscible. If not, we will not have a clear separation. So that's the must. To have some clear separation, something should be immiscible. So keep to remember that. Try to remember that. <coughs> imagine if you don't have, if just imagine like you, you you add a feed solution that contains your solute and solvent. Sorry, solute and your carrier liquid, and then you add solvent. If everything is miscible, what will happen at the end? You won't have extract or raffinate. All you will get is you will get one output and that output will contain everything A, 
plus b plus c and there won't be any clear separation so it's difficult to separate separate one from another so i think you all understand this concept concept of miscibility and how we can relate it to how do you call it? we can if, if you want you can call it like ease of separation yeah so this is not the right word but it's inversely proportional to its miscibility this is just to get you some idea so now i'm going to to solve some real problem okay i won't solve the problem what i'm going to do in this lecture is uh, i will tell you how to plot in a ternary diagram yeah so that's that's really tough you have to you have to practice and if you manage to solve 10 or 20 problems uh, you will even know what's really happening just after once how do you call <laughs> once you finished with plotting you will know what type of system we are talking about but to, to know that you you have to solve at least 10 or more than 10 different type of problems and you have to deal with the different type of systems I, I i know for this module you will not have time to do that so what i'm going to do is like i will sh i will solve two or three problems myself and then try to repeat the same probably you will expect something similar in your final exam but I'm going to show you something like when we are going to deal with the different system how the ternary diagram will look like yeah so let's uh, at the end of your lecture this lecture you will you will understand what I'm talking about yeah? you might have been a bit lost because it's nobody can understand very easily ternary systems because we have three components and uh, you, you need a you should have some some prior knowledge to to understand the ternary system so that's why we are learning it very slow and and i know you will learn it let's do some experiment where our goal is to extract acetic acid from its aqua solution aqua solution is nothing something that contains water which means acetic acid is completely dissolved in water so we are going to extract acetic acid from its aqueous solution using isopropyl ether ether isopropyl ether as your solvent so isopropyl ether is your solvent so acetic acid from its aqueous solution this is your feed solution so acetic acid is your solute so we use the word notation c and your water is your carrier liquid so we will use our notation a and your solvent is isopropyl ether so we will use the notations b what's this system so this system is like um okay for the moment don't don't think about whether it's partially miscible or partially immiscible at the end of this the once we finished plotting this data in the ternary diagram i will tell you how to identify whether the system is partially miscible, partially immiscible, or completely immiscible. There are a few tricks to do that. Yeah, so what we have is like, uh, at the end of the experiment, you have three components. In your raffinate side and then you have three components in your extract side so this is your extract and this is your raffinate yes and then oh by the way i just thought to put some no like a small information so acetic acid world health organization <coughs> they they listed they listed acetic acetic acid as one of the essential medicines for children and one more thing just a reminder 
this is a more a chemical engineering problem rather than related to like a batch pharma process engineering but we have to solve this type of problem before going into something related to pharmaceutical chemistry or engineering so this is a pure chemical engineering problem nevertheless we need acetic acid for many good reasons and we need to know about this technique and to, to understand this technique is better to to solve this type of problem this is an established system and then the system will help you to to understand the the concept of ternary diagram how to plot and once you finished plotting the the results it will also help you to understand what type of system that we are dealing with so just by looking at the diagram you will learn okay i know a and b are not miscible okay i see the diagram i, I know which components are miscible which components are immiscible so those things you will learn through this type of systems i wrote it here so at the end of this exercise you will know how to draw a ternary diagram it's 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 not difficult yeah like uh, you know you all know how to plot x versus y now we are going to have a third component connecting these two ends so that's what you are going to to do and why do we need to plot this ternary diagram yeah? so once you finish plotting this ternary diagram there are uh, some some methods it's not even methods we call them as like a some rules rules created by some chemical engineers which allows you to to design a design a liquid liquid extraction unit but to design that we need we need this ternary diagram or ternary plot i should have said a long time ago like whenever we are going to to deal with the tutorial i prefer you to take a pen and paper and also try to print print the ternary graph i i already upload the, uploaded this in the sulis if you go to the, um, let's come back here go to sulis click the useful resources folder and there you will find a graph sheet where which allows where you can plot this ternary diagram normally in the exam we will give the this type of graph without any number like 100 90 or something like that 50 but the graph which i sent to you the which is already uploaded in the sulis you have some clear information where is your 100 percent where is your zero percent something like that yeah? so i already talked about how to, how to deal with the ternary diagram in in the lecture five i think try to check it and then try to download download this this graph and try to print it print maybe at least uh, 10 copies so that it will help you to to practice practice in the home so i will solve this one by myself and then try to do it by yourself like um take the same data try to plot it <coughs> try to plot it so so why are we doing this to design an extraction unit we must know how to plot a ternary diagram and one more thing i already wrote this because this is what i expect from you at the moment at the moment everything might sound a bit weird and might look weird why do we need to to plot a ternary diagram yeah so but but once you have the ternary diagram probably in the next tutorial or next lecture i don't know how to call you will learn how to exploit this uh, ternary diagram to design an extraction unit uh, we can perform perform a lot of uh, design calculations using the ternary diagram that thing we are going to learn in the next lecture 
So for this one, we are going to I will read the problem again. So that's the goal. We need to move acetic acid from aqueous solution to the solvent side. So somebody did this experiment already and then they get the update this type of values. So this is your one experiment, two experiment, three experiment, four experiment, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they performed nine experiments and then they these are the values they got it. They already separated the extract and the raffinate and they already calculated the weight percentage in each of these fractions. So, so this experiment is not a tough experiment to do. Like you take a feed solution. So that contains your solute. Then you add some solvent, say 1 kg. And just assume your feed is 2 kgs. And maybe 0.5 kg in that is your solute. So you completely mix. Once your system reached to an equilibrium, you stop the system and then you will get some clear phase separation. And then you calculate the weight fraction, weight fraction on the raffinate side and the weight fraction on the extract side. Obviously, you can repeat this experiment by changing the volume fraction of the solvent which you were adding. You know? So, if you start 1 kg of solvent, do the next experiment with 0.5 kg and do the next experiment with, uh, with another amount, say like 2 kgs. So that way you can manage to get a table like this, like this from 1 to 9. So there are 9 experimental results here and you have both sides. One is your raffinate side and these are your weight fraction of acetic acid, weight fraction of water, weight fraction of isopropyl ether and on the extract side acetic acid, water and isopropyl ether, not acid. So, and what you look at here, one thing you can understand, like, uh, let's change it to highlighter. If you look isopropyl ether, you, s you s okay, forget this one. No, 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 it's not correct. Yeah, you don't have to interpret anything at the moment. What we are going to do is like, uh, we are going to plot this data and then we will try to make some meaning out of that and try to remember that you have something here raffinate and you have something with extract and that's because uh, there is a clear phase separations which means we can separate something from something yeah so try to to remember these things i cannot plot on this notebook so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to stop recording and then I'm going to record separately on a PowerPoint and then I will show how to plot plot on a ternary diagram. So I recommend you I recommend you to to print print the the ternary plot which is already in the Sulis and then just to follow me whatever I'm going to say try to repeat it by yourself yeah so so that's the easy way to to learn. the exam if i'm going to ask some questions in the liquid liquid extractions i know you need extra bit of time to solve this type of problems because it's going to take a lot of time to to plot the ternary diagram i'm going to record it the powerpoint yeah so i will stop recording now I'm going to show you how to deal with a ternary diagram. Few people they call it as uh, if you want you can okay any, everybody knows this is an equilateral triangle. Some people we call it as a ternary plot or a ternary diagram or a ternary 
triangle so that's what we are going to to learn so so we will solve some problems but before that you need to know how to read the graph or how to plot on this type of graph i know you all know how to deal with this uh, two dimensional graph you have x here you have y here <coughs> and then you can plot some data you might generate some function some exponential function like this or some linear line like this so and so on so but when you're having like this type of plot you have three we can call them as axis or we can call them as apex vertex of triangle you know? so so how to deal with this one so for, for guideline to, to guide you I gave you some number already here 90 80 70 I'll explain it what is that so so you all know we are dealing with liquid liquid extraction liquid liquid extraction typically we will have a feed solution that contains two components which is your solute plus your carrier liquid and then we will have some solvent so we will have some solvent so hope you all remember the notations for solvent we are going to use the notation b for your solute we are going to use the notation c and for your carrier liquid we are going to use the notation a so it will be like a gas so try to remember that and whenever you see this equilateral triangle or whenever i'm going to give you some data you have to plot it like this your c should start from here and a at the left hand side and b the right hand side of your triangle so how to how to read this triangle so one thing you have is like you, you can call it as like three origins huh? three points you have three corners in that triangle and this corner just follow the pen so throughout this lecture just to follow wherever my pen moves i will try to use some arrows so that you can follow it a bit easily so at the top of this triangle so that will be like a hundred percent C so all the corners of the triangle that corresponds to hundred percentage so if you take this X Y graph say X and Y this origin will be correspond will be equal to zero comma zero so likewise or the, the rule for equilateral triangle is this corner here so this is hundred percent P and this corner in the left hand side that's 100% A and the other corner of your triangle top of your triangle so that's 100% C so I hope you all can follow this one so now let's talk with the, about this particular point 100% A and then the, just draw a line the exact opposite face of A we can call this as the base of the triangle so any point on this line any point on this line it's going to be zero percentage of a zero percentage of a and then this line so this is your this tip is your hundred percent a so just draw this line so this is your ninety percentage a so any point on this line the percentage weight of your compound a will be equal to 90 weight percentage and then this is your 80 percentage a line so any point on this line the percentage of a will be equal to 80 weight percentage then let's go to this so this line so this is your 50 percentage 50 weight percentage a line so any point on this line this line you put your cursor on any of any point on this particular line the weight percentage of a will be equal to 50 and so and if you come to this line so any point on this line just follow the pen 
so that will be equal to 10 weight percentage of A. So I hope you all can follow this and finally the last line which is the base of the triangle which is exactly opposite to that of where you have your 100 percentage A. So this will any point on this line is 0 weight percentage A. So which means the solvent sorry where the, the carrier liquid weight percentage of your carrier liquid will be equal to 0. Yeah, I hope you all can, can get this one. So and then we can so this is for your compound A in this case A refers to the weight percentage of your carrier liquid in the liquid mixture. Yeah. So now let us go to the this part B, B which is nothing but your solvent concentration. go to the new page so it will be a bit easier to follow. So try to plot C on the top, A on the left side of your triangle, B on this corner of your triangle. So C A B cap. So this particular point just follow the pen. So this is going to be your 100 percentage B and then the exact opposite base. So this any point on this base line of this triangle sorry. So any point on this line that is going to be 0 weight percentage, 0 weight percentage of B plus the remaining will be A plus C. So what do I mean by this? Like imagine if you ex extract or uh, your, your raffinate, your raffinate contains 0 weight percentage. B and then 50 weight percentage A, 50 weight percentage of, of your compound C. So this point definitely lie on this line. So what is this? So, so I, will, I will show you later how to plot, how to plot these three values on ternary diagram. But for the moment we will see how to understand, how to understand a ternary diagram or a ternary plot or an equilateral triangle, you can call any name. So this is your 100 percent line, so this will be your 90 percentage. So any point on this line, the weight percentage of B will be equal to 90 plus the remaining will be A plus C and then so this is your 70 percentage B line, 70 weight percentage of B. Any point on this line, you will get 70 percentage. So, if you want, I can. The, the next line will be 72, 74, 76, 78, and then. Yeah, I had problems with the previous slide. I'll just quickly show you again. C A B. So this is your. This point is your 100 percent B. So this will be your. 60 percent B, 60 weight percentage of your B. So any point on this line, the weight percentage of B will be equal to 60 yeah. and the remaining will be A plus C. Hope you all, you all can follow this one and then this is your 30 percentage line. So any point on this line, the weight percentage of B that should be equal to sorry 30 and then so do here so this is your 10 weight percentage B line so this one sorry I don't know how to plot uh, this one so that's your 10 weight percentage B line so any point any point on this line the weight percentage of your B in that fluid mixture or in this liquid mixture it should be equal to 10 10 weight percentage. So the baseline here at the end of the triangle, the base of the triangle, sorry. 
so this side any point on this line that should be equal to zero weight percentage zero weight percentage of p so that's the that's the rule and that's how you have to read the equilateral triangle so if i give you a triangle if i give you some plot like so my con my liquid contains 10 weight percentage a 10 weight percentage b 20 sorry remaining will be 80 weight percentage of c you have to use these values and then plot in this type of graph form. so i hope you all can follow this one and now we can deal with the other compound or other corner of your triangle which is your c c is your 100 weight percent c at this point just follow the pen so in the top of your triangle so that corresponds to 100 weight percentage of c c is nothing but solute solute in the liquid liquid extraction experiment so let's go to the next slide so let's write it again i'm going to write c so this is your this point is 100 weight percentage of your c again this point is 100 weight percentage of your uh, solvent which is which we call it as b and this point is 100 weight percentage of a which is nothing but your carrier liquid so this is your 100 weight percentage c this point so, and the same rule applies here, yeah? you just come to the opposite side, the base, so in this line, so any point on this line, in the base line, so that should be the weight percentage of your solute will be equal to zero, zero weight percentage, right, and then this is your 10 weight percentage of your compound C 10 weight percent C so any point on this line any point on this line the weight percentage of your C should be equal to 10 so 10 weight percentage of your C I think this is easy I think and then this is your 50 percent line 50 weight percentage always pay attention like uh, especially when you are having this equilateral triangle it will create some optical illusion so this line it, you will think like it's not cutting exactly the half of your triangle and that comes from the optical illusion so try to count so this is your 90 percent c 80 percent 80 percent c 70 percent c 60 percent c and so this should be automatically your 50 weight percentage of c this is going to be a bit tricky so try to try to follow this one it, it may be very tough so better count the count the line anyway in the exam i will give this graph sheet anyway it's already in the sulis so try to print it out and keep it with you during the exam time if you have any problems from liquid liquid equilibrium you you need this you need this graph sheet so anyway I'm, I'm going to solve only two or three problems so and we so so you you will get used to, to this graph yeah so try to print print two or three three sheets of this triangle and try to plot plot the data which i'm going to give you or which i will show how to plot first and then you you sit in your home try to read the data and then plot it yourself yeah it might take some time but uh, you will do it it's it's not uh, it's not tough it's it's bit time consuming maybe for the if you if you are seeing the equilateral triangle for the first time it 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 it, it, it will be time consuming yeah so so but it's there are few tricks few tricks to to plot the values very easily i will show this during this during this lecture time so then you may not find it as as difficult yeah? i know few students they 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 struggle whenever i put a ternary diagram and and they because they are not used to this three axis yeah, so it's not difficult all you need to remember is 
this corner is 100 weight percentage of like if you take a triangle so each corner will be 100 weight percentage this is 100 weight percentage a this corner will be 100 weight percentage b this corner will be 100 weight percentage c so and then you have 10 20 30 40 50 60 90 and then oh sorry so this is your 100 weight percentage c in the top so it will be 90 80 70 60 50 40 eventually the final line will be zero zero weight percentage c and then this corner will be 100 weight percentage b so this will be 90 percentage b 80 70 60 so on and then finally the baseline that will be zero weight percentage of b <clears throat> so once you plot some data you will understand it so i hope you all know well uh, you all know how to see the how to make use of this equilateral triangle or a, or a triangular graph it is really important for you to learn a ternary diagram yeah so if you if you look at the job requirement by many pharmaceutical industry they <coughs> they in, in many places they might even mention like uh, I know to use ternary diagrams so, so so that's a big plus in your cv so so at the end of this this liquid liquid extraction you can you can add it in your cv that i know how to plot a ternary diagram that's a big asset believe me so so learning about how to plot a ternary diagram is, is not a bad idea at all it's, it's it will be time consuming but it's it's rewarding at the end yeah so at, so once you know to learn, so you can you can add it in your CV. I know how to plot a ternary diagram. Just put uh, exposure to like uh, expertise in turn drawing ternary diagram, something like that. This module is is really good module in that way. You know, like you you are studying a lot of things that that you that you need that you need when you go for a job. Yeah, I, I know a lot of job description from many pharmaceutical industries in Ireland. They they ask you to have some knowledge in crystallization, pad tools, process scheduling, superpro design. If it, superpro design is the software which you are going to learn through this module. So, so all these are a big plus and also ternary diagrams. So now we will know how to draw a ternary diagram. If you know how the ternary diagram works, you know where is your hundred percentage of your each component, where is your zero percentage of your each component, then you almost cracked everything in that problem so that's why i'm going a bit slow but it's okay you will figure once we solve this problem you will realize this is really extremely easy to to do this so i already explained where is your 100 weight percentage a 100 weight percentage b 100 weight percentage c and now you know where is your zero weight percentage c zero weight percentage a zero weight percentage b and always try to remember the you are sticking to your common notation c is for your solute and then a is for your solvent and then b sorry a is for your carrier liquid this handwriting is so bad it's not about my handwriting i couldn't write well using this the the pad which i am having and b is your solvent So I will I will tell why we have everything in terms of a weight percentage. Let's go to the next slide. So before going to explain why we have everything in terms of weight percentage, I will try to explain a few more things. So again, this point is your hundred percent C. On the left side of your triangle, that's 100 weight percentage of your A and this is 100 weight percentage of B so this is your solvent so this is your carrier liquid sorry and this this top of your triangle that's 100 weight percentage of your solute so remember this word cab 
so that will help you to remember is to that will help you to 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 remember where to put your c where to put your a and where to put your b so and then how to read the, the equilateral triangle so let's take some point randomly maybe this point so what do you see here so i said this is your 100 percentage c this is your 90 percent c this is your 80 percent c 70 percent c follow the line wherever i'm drawing 60 percent c so this line corresponds to 50 weight percentage 50 per percentage of your c solute yeah and then so you have this line so what is this line so this plot so this so this one we know this base is uh, zero percentage b so this line should be 10 sorry um yeah 10 percentage b so this line should be 20 weight percent b so this point that corresponds to that this point corresponds to 50 percent c and also 20 weight percentage b so whatever the remaining 50 plus 20 100 minus 50 plus 20 that will be equal to 30 weight percentage a so you will see exactly some line cutting on this point so we know what is that your 100 percentage a is here this is 90 percent a 80 percent a 70 percent a follow the red line this is 60 percent a 50 percent a 40 percent a so this line is 30 percent a so at this particular point so that will be your composition so 30 weight percent a 20 weight percent b 58 percent c so if i say your your raffinate contains 58 percent of c 20 weight percentage of b and then 30 weight percentage of a and if i ask you to plot it on an equilateral triangle so that point will be here so this is your point that corresponds to this particular composition of your liquid so if your liquid contains 50 weight percentage of a, c 20 weight percent b 30 weight percent a so that will be your point on a equilateral triangle and then let's take another point here say this one so what is this line this is your 20 weight percentage just to follow the line whatever i'm drawing now so that's your 20 weight percentage a sorry 20 weight percentage of c 20 weight percentage of c and this line so that should be this is 90 weight percent b 80 weight percent b 70 weight this is your 60 weight percentage of your b value so so this particular point it also that corresponds to 60 weight percentage of b value and then 20 weight percentage of c value so whatever the remaining 60 plus 20 is 80 so 20 will be your a value 20 will be the so automatically this line will be 20 weight percentage of a so what we learned from this one is like if you have a ternary diagram if you have three values say 50 20 30 if you manage to pick your 50 line and then if you manage to pick your 20 percent line 50 weight percentage of say c line and then say like uh, okay let's put this this is 30 weight percentage of a or uh, sorry b 20 weight percentage of b your b is here so if you manage to pick any two line that's more than enough to to put your point on a triangular diagram and why is that and why is that it's like it's the, the answer is very simple at any point this point any point any any point on your triangle the composition of your three components that should be equal to a plus b plus c that should be equal to 100 yeah so if you know this 
so you, you don't even have to look at the third one yeah? so if you manage to pick the any two line that corresponds to any 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 two of your components in the liquid mixture that actually contains three different components that's more than enough to plot a ternary diagram so so just i'm going to repeat again so you have a ternary diagram i gave you a b and c say a is 10 b is 10 and c is sorry i have some problem with my pen so let me repeat it again so if you have a ternary diagram like this so we have to plot exactly the same way c a and b b is this side is a hundred weight percentage b hundred weight percentage a this is hundred weight percentage of your c so if i gave you if i give you some number say like a 10 weight percentage a 20 weight percentage of b and then say the remaining it will be 70 weight percentage c so if you have something like this you don't have to i know if you if you're plotting like a 2d graph like x and y with only two dimensions then you will look only what is your x value and what's your y value and you will plot like that so you can follow the same rule even when you are dealing with a ternary graph so just to pick any two say 20 weight percentage b so this is your 100 weight percent b so your 20 weight percentage b will be somewhere around here so 20 weight percentage b and then just then we pick 70 weight percentage c so this is your this point is your 100 weight percent c so it will be 70 weight percentage c will be say like a 90 80 70 so so this point this line will be 70 weight percentage line so is this is your 20 weight percentage line so both meets at this point so that will correspond to your your liquid composition that we are dealing with so in fact the the remaining 10 weight percentage of a will cut somewhere around here so this line will be automatically equal to 10 weight percentage of a so all you need to worry is like uh, if you have an equilateral triangle if you have a b and c you can select any two and then pick those lines this is say this is your c line and say this is your a line so whatever that point that should correspond to the liquid composition here so i hope you all are following this one so <coughs> this is not really tough you know like uh, once you know how to deal with equilateral triangle or this ternary graph as they say so you you, you will find it easy all you need is to do is like uh, spend some time with paper and pen use the graph sheet and then try to plot plot whenever you have free time you know so i will recommend you try to spend at least one hour plotting the table val the values which i'm going to give you anyway i will plot one point in the in the graph so you have to plot the remaining yourself so it's I, I, it's not like a homework but it's good for you to to practice because in the exam i'm going to ask you something related to liquid liquid extraction that time you might know you, you might uh, you should know how to deal with the ternary diagram yeah in the exam i might even give the whole diagram with every values plotted on this one and then i will tell like uh, use this diagram and get, design a, an extraction unit for me yeah? something some extraction problem i will ask you to to solve i will give you the ternary diagram with all the data plotted already on the ternary diagram instead of asking you to plot a b c so on the ternary diagram I will ask you directly to i will give you directly the values plus the experimental results already plotted and then i might ask you to solve some problem yeah? so so in that case you should remember where is your 100 percentage a where is your 100 percentage b where is your 100 percentage c and how are these lines what are these lines so so where is your 10 percent sorry where is your 10 percent c where is your 90 percentage c line so those things you have to to <coughs> to remember so that's why i'm going a bit slow but uh, it is a must and this is a big asset in your cv so you can add it in your cv i have i have expertise with a ternary diagram yeah? so so go so take this very serious and then try to 
spend some time use pen and paper as i always say it's not a bad idea at all so i'm going to introduce you or not introduce you i already talked about uh, how to do this experiment in the lab so i will i will tell you how to do it and then how to get them in the weight percent weight percentage and then we will try to solve not solve i we will try to plot plot some experimental data that we obtained from experiments okay so let's go to the next slide i really miss my paper tube notebook this one is really horrible yeah so let's uh, i will i already showed you how we perform a liquid liquid experiment so but i will show you will see quickly one more time so so you have your feed solution feed solution that contains your solvent sorry solute so this is your solute use this notation C and then the carrier liquid which is carrying your solute so carrier liquid it is what we use the notation A and then they are completely miscible yeah? so if you put a light here it will the light will come outside yeah? without uh, uh, without any change in the in the intensity of your light yeah? So, which means they are completely clear, they are not turbid, they are completely miscible, something like that. Yeah? So, this is your starting solution. So, your feed solution contains two components, solute, or just I am going to use the notation C, and then your A. This is nothing but your carrier liquid. And now you add uh, some mass of your solvent solvent and then you put some overhead stirrer on the top so once you put a stirrer what happens actually is like uh, so they once we are mixing it will create something like a you can call them as a fluid bubbles i don't know the right word maybe like a like a packet of fluids yeah? so these are nothing but your your feed solution that contains your solute so your solute will move from this your feed solution will move from this packet to your extracting solvent extracting solvent so just imagine you have some analytical probe that can measure measure the concentration of your solute in the extracting solvent say this is time versus concentration of your C in the x-axis. C is nothing but your solute concentration. At some time, it will increase and then it will reach a saturation. So this is called as equilibrium point. So once we know that uh, our, we reach it to this point, we stop the mixing and then we allow the, the system to settle. At some particular level of composition, they they will they will separate i already talked about uh, if you need to see a clear separation something should be partially miscible or immiscible so at the end of your experiment after once you stop your agitation and you allow this solution to settle you will have a clear separation so you will have some face on the top some face on the bottom so this we call them as extract so this will be your solvent solvent with very high concentration of your solute so that we already extracted from this side to this side and this is your feed solution it will now contain less amount of solute so that's the rule and then your feed solution might and imagine if your feed solution and your, your solvent if they are partially miscible partially miscible then you might get some concentration you might have some percentage of your solvent in the 
raffinate side and you might have some percentage of your carrier liquid on the extract side so once you separate these two components see let's draw somewhere here so this is your extract this is your raffinate so it might contain a plus b plus c and this one will contain a plus b plus c so next your solvent in your extract side contains a bit of your carrier liquid a and your raffinate side might contain a bit of your uh, solvent b which means a and b are partially miscible or partially miscible <coughs> so that's how we do the do the experiment i hope you all all are following this one so you start from from your feed solution you add some solvent you and then you provide some mixing and then some mass transfer process happens your solute will move from your feed solution or your carrier liquid side to the solvent side and that once you reach the equilibrium you allow the you stop the agitation you allow the system to settle so that you will get clear phase separation you have two phases one is your extract and another is your raffinate and then in, the, in this experiment your extract might contain all the three components a plus b plus c and your raffinate might contain all the three components a plus b plus c in your extract side you will have a very low percentage of your feed feed sorry your carrier liquid and in the raffinate side you might get some small percentage of your solvent and that's because your carrier liquid and your solvent are partially miscible yeah? so that's why you see all the three components on both sides and still we get a clear separation between extract and raffinate no matter you have a tiny percentage of your carrier liquid on the extract side or you have a tiny percentage of your solvent on the raffinate side yeah so i hope you all understand this one so that's how this experiment works and that's how we do the experiment yeah? so let's go and just assume that uh, we did some experiment again so at equilibrium you have two phase extract raffinate and for the moment let's put some values so this extract contains uh, say like like 10 grams of a 20 grams of b and then say like 80 grams of c and then let's put the raffinate it contains uh, say 10 grams of, of <coughs> 10 grams of what of, of b 5 grams of your solute maybe 5 grams of c and the remaining 85 grams not 85 sorry Rem okay is it maybe say like 30 grams 30 grams of a and even here instead of 80 grams let's put 60 60 grams of c so just assume these are our composition at the end of your experiment so these are in grams <coughs> and we have to convert them into weight percentage only then we can plot it on a ternary diagram remember in the ternary diagram any point on the ternary diagram that should correspond to a plus b plus c the total weight percentage should be equal to 100 so we cannot plot a 10 5 30 on a ternary diagram you see 30 plus 5 is 35 35 plus 10 is 45 it doesn't sum up to to 100 so we cannot plot this on a ternary diagram to use a ternary diagram it should be you you must convert your actual experimental values into weight percentage that's a must so that's why i'm just writing these things yeah so you won't find this in the textbook so but i have to explain this during the lecturing time so sorry for that i know i'm taking extra bit of time but you should know the reason why you have a hundred percentage here hundred sorry why you have 100 percentage on each corner and why any point on this triangle the sum of a plus plus b plus c should equal to 100 percentage yeah? so 
So you must know how to convert something into Z percentage. So let's take this value 10, 15, 30, this one. So your weight percentage of B will be equal to 10 divided by 45 multiplied by 100. And weight percentage of C will be C divided by 45 multiplied by 100. And then weight percentage of A will be equal to um, 30 by 45 multiplied by 100. So whatever the values you get, if you sum that one will be equal to 100 weight percentage. So that's how you convert the values into weight percentage. But anyway, you don't have to worry about these things. In the exam, if I ask something, I will give directly in terms of weight percentage. Yeah? So you will have, if you sum all this value, A plus B plus C, it will automatically equal to 100 weight percentage. So to, to use a ternary diagram, so to, to plot on a ternary diagram, you, your data should be in terms of weight percentage. Yeah? So, so that's the idea you should have about. I know you, now you know what's the equilateral triangle, where, is, where to put your solute, where to put your solvent so, and carrier liquid, and where is your 100% carrier liquid, where is your 100% solute, where is your 100% solvent, and so on. And, and, <coughs> and you know where is the, where is your 0% solute, 0% solvent, also 0% carrier liquid yeah so so these things you know and you know now at any point on an equilateral triangle the sum of all the components that should be equal to 100 so you know this one so let's do some virtual experiment so let's go to the next slide so let's just assume that we are doing some experiment so what the experiment is we have a feed solution that contains a solute and then a carrier liquid. The solute is what? Let's say acetic acid. And then your carrier liquid is water. So this is something like an aqueous solution of acetic acid. So that's your feed solution. And our goal is to separate acetic acid using the third solvent, which is we are going to use isopropyl ether, ether, isopropyl ether. So this is going to be your solvent. So, so that's your feed solution. It contains uh, acetic acid plus water. And then we are going to add a solvent, which is isopropyl ether. And then we mix them. Then we do the liquid-liquid equilibrium experiment and then just assume we have some clear separation at the end. You may not have a clear clear separation that can happen as well. Yeah, so only at some particular composition you will have this clear compass clear separation. You will see that at the end, end of the this lecture. <coughs> so you have this you perform this experiment and now you this is your X. This is your raffinate. And the top is your extract. So you will have a clear separation as well because the, there you will see a clear density difference. So the density of your extract will be lesser than the density of your raffinate. So that's why you see some clear separation. So it's, if you put uh, water and oil, you will have a clear separation yeah? because the we have some clear density difference, difference in the density. So, and then we calculate the weight of uh, A, B, and C in extract, and then we calculate the weight, the, the, the grams of A, B, and C, and then finally we converted them into weight percentage. I already show how to convert them into weight percentage. So now we have one experiment, and then we have, uh, how do you call it, let's write, write it here. So we have two phases, one is extract, another is raffinate. Oh, I don't know how to write it very clear. So this is your extract. Pen is not great. 
also and then under extract in extract you might have three components a b c so don't forget everything is in terms of weight percentage not just weight and then raffinate again a b c you have something weight percentage so this is your one experiment you performed one experiment at the end you have a clear separation so you have extract and raffinate you calculated the weight percentage of a b and c so you have six numbers out of one experiment so don't forget these things and then let's go to the next slide so someone did someone did nine experiments in total nine experiments in total and then we got nine different values So this one is from experiment one. And this is from your experiment nine. So I said to you that you have your extract side, you have your raffinate side. So an A plus B plus C and the raffinate side is this value from the ninth experiment. And then a plus b plus c in the extract side in the ninth experiment is this value so what we are going to do is like we are going to plot these values on this ternary diagram so you all know where is your c hundred percent c and where is your hundred percent a and where is your hundred percent b remember this word cap c a, B. So I think uh, this is fine. I think I think I'm having my pen is not working for some reason. Suddenly, I'm going to stop and then I will continue in the next slide. 